In this question, we're given this big complicated looking reaction and this table of data. And then we're asked to determine the uh, rate order of chlorine dioxide. That is component A. In fact, if I write, can write some letters up here, I'm going to call chlorine dioxide component A and the hydroxide component B. And hopefully we're okay with that. We should remember that uh, the rate of any reaction is going to be equal to some rate constant K multiplied by the concentration of component 1, or I'll write down component A, raised to some uh, exponent M multiplied by the concentration of component B raised to some exponent N, and so forth and so on if you have more components participating in the reaction. So what we're really trying to determine, if we're calling the chlorine dioxide component A, we're trying to figure out what M is. How in the world do you figure out what M is? M, by the way, is the reaction rate order with respect to component A, chlorine dioxide. How do we figure that out? Well, what we do is we focus in on the experiments where component B's concentration was kept the same. If we look up at this table, you'll notice that in experiment 1, Component B, the hydroxide, had a concentration of 0.03. And in experiment 2, it also had a concentration of 0.03. So I'm going to ignore experiment 3 for this question. The reason is because I'm asking, I've been asked the rate order for chlorine dioxide, component A. So I want to know how does the rate get affected when I change the concentration of component A and not B. That's the reason I only care about experiments 1 and 2. Hopefully that makes sense. So let's zoom in on this. In experiment one, the concentration, I'll rewrite this here, the concentration of my chlorine dioxide in experiment one was 0.06. In experiment two, it was 0.02. I divide one by the other, the big one by the small one, and you'll notice I get three. That isn't too bad. How was the rate affected when I made that change? So I'm going to go ahead and write my rates out. When the, uh, rate, or sorry, when the concentration was 0.06, the rate was 0 0.0248. When the concentration was changed to 0 0.02, the rate went to 0 0.00276. If I divide the big one by the small one, I end up getting 9. So what do these two numbers mean now? How do I use them? Well, all I do now is I take 3 and raise it to the M and set that equal to 9 and solve for M. What is M? Well, you know, assuming you know how to do uh, basic algebra, you'll discover that M is equal to 2. 3 squared is 9, so M is 2. That is the answer to this question. So we're kind of getting closer to determining what the rate law is for this reaction. Now we'll move on to the next question. In the next question, it asks me to determine what the rate order is with respect to hydroxide, component B. From our previous uh, work, we determined that M, the rate order with respect to component A, was 2. What is it for component B? How do I determine that? Once again, just as I did with the previous uh, question, I'm going to focus in on the experiments in which component A's concentration was kept the same. That's experiments 2 and 3, because I want to see how does changing B affect the rate? In experiment one, the concentration of hydroxide was 0.0. Uh, by the way, I always want to divide whichever of these two is larger by the smaller one. So I don't have to necessarily go in the order of experiment two and then experiment three. I can do experiment three divided by experiment two. I want to take the bigger one divided by the smaller one. Hopefully you're okay with that. So the bigger one is 0.09. So in experiment 3, the concentration of hydroxide was 0.09. I'm going to divide it by 0.03, which was the concentration in experiment 2. How did that affect the rates? Well, the rate, when I set it, the concentration to 0.09 was 0.00828. When I set it to 0.03, the rate changed to 0.00276. Now I just do the division. 9 divided by 3 is equal to th 3. <laughs> And uh, this thingy divided by that thingy is also equal to 3. Now all I do, I've got these two numbers, is I take 3, this number, raised to the n, equals this number, 3. Solve for n. What does n turn out to be? n, in this case, equals 1. That is the reaction order with respect to hydroxide. 
so I can replace n with 1 here, and then try and stand back and ask myself, what does that really mean? What it means is that if I were to double the concentration of A, I would quadruple the rate, because it would be doubled squared. That makes sense. If I were, on the other hand, to double the concentration of B, it would only double the rate, because it's doubled 1. Hopefully that's OK. <laughs> that is the answer to those first two questions with respect to this uh, problem. The overall order, and, and by the way, we can kind of rewrite the rate law as being K multiplied by the concentration of component A, which is chlorine dioxide squared, multiplied by the concentration of component B, which is hydroxide, to the first power. It's asking me the overall rate. The overall rate order, all right, overall order, is equal to the, all I do is take the exponents, 2 and 1, and add them together. Equals 2 plus 1 equals 3. We would say that this reaction is second order with respect to chlorine dioxide, first order with respect to hydroxide, and the overall order is 3. So the answer to that question is 3. Now, we're going to take a look at the next question. In the next question, it asks us to figure out what K is. What is K? How do you figure out what K is? <laughs> this actually is not as bad as you think it is. Once we've gotten to this point where we have a rate law written out, and we know the orders for each of the components A and B, all I have to do is go up to the table and pick any of these experiments, one, two, or three, whichever one I like, plug in the numbers that I have, and solve for K. Yeah, so let's go ahead and take the numbers from experiment one. But you could do the same thing from experiments two or three, and you should get the same answer. In experiment one, the rate is point zero two four eight. K, of course, we don't know. We're trying to figure out what that is. What was the concentration of chlorine dioxide in experiment one? Well, it was 0 0.06. And that is going to be squared. What was the concentration of hydroxide in experiment one? It was 0 0.03, and that's going to be raised to the first power. So all I really have to do is use algebra to figure out what K is by dividing this by these two guys. Make sense? All right. I'll let you do that on your own.